pensions or something we really do like to put to the back of our minds, which is why around 15 million of us have no pension or savings at all, and a lot of us have no idea what is waiting for us when we retire. We all know that managing our money can be very tricky. Did you know that between the years 2016 and 2018, the UK's household debt was a massive 1.28 trillion? And with age expectancy on the way up, this could leave a lot of people very vulnerable as they get old. In this episode, we'll meet people who've seen this impact and using their knowledge to help others. Well, we might not have been paying enough money into a pension over the years, but it's not too late. You can still turn things around and you can still have a pot of money. We're going to find out what can go wrong with your pensions and how you can avoid losing your savings. We found that lots of women actually weren't aware that the state pension age had increased and we felt that something should be done to try and get some sort of compensation for everybody. And we'll be visiting a company that's helping to demystify pensions by giving advice to thousands across the UK. Yeah. So people don't understand the ins and outs of pensions, about investments, mm -hmm. and they need someone to put it into really straightforward language and explain it to them. All on this episode of Hot Topics. In this series, we look at hidden stories that have a big impact in the UK and we meet real life heroes who have first hand experience. We'll be looking at questions like can the UK remove all carbon emissions by 2050? Are our pensions and life savings at risk? How can technology revolutionise our healthcare? How does eating organic help the planet and our well-being? Join me to find out more on the UK's biggest hot topic. Pensions are meant to protect us in later life by making sure we invest into a pot whilst we're still working. However, the world of pensions today can be intimidating and complicated. The average person in the UK has 11 jobs during their lifetime. So that works out that about two in three people have multiple pension pots. A lot of companies use excessive jargon which just bamboozles us. So we're going to find people who will cut through all of that make it understandable. Coming up, we meet financial commentator Martin James, who will tell us about the dangers of not planning for the future. Hello there, Sean. We'll talk to Joe, Sean and Sheila about their personal experience dealing with the pension system. And we'll visit a leading pensions advisor to find out how a pension and impartial advice service works. To find out more about how most people view managing their money across the UK, I'm talking with money and consumer rights expert Martin James to ask how, as a nation, we cope with saving for a rainy day. For 20 years, you've been giving people financial advice. So are you as bad as the rest of us? Oh, completely. I'm the first person to put my hands up and say I have to actually follow my own advice, um, but I have to make myself do it. Pensions are something that we think happen later on. Again, you know, Anthea, I'll be the first person to admit I'm in total denial about my age, which is 37, by the way, for uh -huh. the record, I'm slightly older. And we all have to reach the point where we, we basically sit down and go, OK, well, we might not have been paying enough money into a pension mm -hmm. over the years, but it's not too late, and I really can't emphasise this enough. Even if you've let it go or you're not sure what uh -huh. to do, you can still turn things around and you can still have a pot of money. My parents' generation had a job for life, they had a pension, they didn't really think about it. What's changed for us? So I think for, for our generation, and indeed yeah. the generations that are coming after us, that job for life is gone. You know, most of us will work on three-year contracts, no final salary pensions. Mm -hmm. So you end up with lots of little bits of investments and savings tucked away all over the place that you can bring together into one whole pot, if you like, mm -hmm. and then that will help you over the years. With all these little pensions around, what's the downside for having multiple pots? The downside of that is smaller amounts of money generate smaller amounts of profit if they're making profits. Mm -hmm. And every single one of those, you'll be paying commission or a management fee or something else. Mm -hmm. So it actually makes more sense to collectively bring those together, if possible, um, and find a better way to invest that money. 
So this is the thing though, you bring them all together. What if you put it all into one pot and then they invest it in the wrong place? I don't want to scare anyone, but I, you know, I did see one case, a lovely gentleman who had £100,000 in a pension um, that was taking a management fee and when he came to claim it, there was £3.50 <gasps> in it. That's the worst one I've seen. Now, it's not going to be like that under every single set of circumstances, but you need to keep an eye on how much money is being taken off that every single year or even month to manage that fund because that will chip into what's left over at the end and a good pension company will actually be able to reduce that management fee dramatically. It's simply a case of having a look around, seeing if there's a better option and just doing a few checks to see if the company seems legit. So we know that people can feel intimidated by the financial industry, but what about state pensions and how changes in government policy can severely affect women? Hello there, Sheila. I'm speaking to Sheila, a volunteer representative of WASPI, that's Women Against State Pension Inequality. Since 2015, they have actively campaigned against the way in which the state pension age for men and women has been equalised. So, Sheila, explain to me what WASPI actually is. We're actually campaigning for women who were born in the 1950s who've had up to six years added on to their state pension age uh, without being properly informed. We found that lots of women actually weren't aware that the state pension age had increased. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were um, in financial difficulties and we felt that something should be done to try and bring it to public attention and secondly to try and get some sort of compensation for everybody. Give me an idea of some of the women who are part of your group and their situation. Right, well there's one woman in particular, she's a single woman, living in London, um, looking after her mother, but because she wasn't getting her state pension, she had to move to the South Coast, sell her house in London, move away from her friends and her family, um, to find somewhere cheaper to live. If they can do it to us, they can do it to anybody, and we feel that our campaign is important as much for raising awareness about the importance of, of pension planning and knowledge, um, as much as getting justice for our own particular age group. What message would you like to give people watching this programme now of all ages? Well, for women who are in my position that were born in the 1950s, we would urge them to join our campaign. Secondly, it's really important that people start planning early for their retirement. And the final thing is, we really believe that it should be part of the education system. And I don't think anybody would disagree with you on any of those points. Thank you very much. So as you gather from Sheila, pensions are not necessarily as simple as we might like to assume. Now we can't control our state pension, but we can control our private one. I'm meeting Jo from Andover, who's agreed to tell me about how she narrowly avoided being stuck in a dead-end pension. So when did you start thinking about a pension? <sighs> a while ago, uh -huh. I thought about it first of all when I was in my, let's say, late 20s. Do you think there's an age when we actually do start thinking seriously about pensions? And when um, we just sort of like... Yeah, I think there is. I think the older you get, the more you start to think about your own mortality. And you your start future, thinking, actually. yeah, your future. Yeah. When you started on this pension journey, what was the state of your various pensions? I had three small pensions and I spoke to a financial advisor and we moved them all to another, to one place, a personal mm. pension. So how did you go about bringing them all into one? I saw an advert for Profile Pensions and they moved all of my pensions into one place and saved me a fortune in fees and also made my pension grow dramatically in a very short space of time, in just over a year. They made it grow by £11,000. So having pulled all these together and put them into one pot, how does it help you manage your financial life? It just makes it easier because I know where everything is and I know that it's being looked after. Before going to Profile Pensions, Jo was paying double the pension fee she needed to. Sorting out her finances when it came to pensions got her focused on her other savings, including those for her 11-year-old son. 
So I put money in, he's 11 now and his little trust fund's worth about 12,000 pounds. Do you chat to your friends now about this? Well? Yeah, I do, I have, I you're do. sounding really <laughs> quite evangelical about it. <laughs> I do, yeah, I mean, I've I do discovered to, this. <laughs> yes, I do, I speak to my friends, but again, it's that thing, you always, you never have enough time and sometimes yeah. you need to make time. So uh, my best friend Carrie and her husband Sean, Sean's a prime example because he's got pensions all over the place, so he needs to get them all under one roof. Now you've opened your eyes and you know so much. How important is it to have a pension? It's really important because no one's going to take care of me in my old age, especially now I'm single. So I have to take care of myself and obviously I've got a child to take care of as well. There are lots of people out there that don't have pensions that really need to start thinking who's going to look after them when it's time to retire. Coming up, we talk to finance blogger Dr Nikki Ramskill. If you really aren't getting on with your money and you're stressed about it, you're worried about it, you're not truly healthy. And we visit Profile Pensions to see how an impartial pensions advisor operates. But what we can do is have a look at the different types of investments and we can use um, data to make sure that we are making the right choices for our customers. So far, we've spoken to people who've experienced financial challenges. Now it's time to speak to the experts. Hello, good morning. It's Sam Packham, the Pension Advisor from Profile Pensions. I've come to Profile Pensions head offices in London, where they offer impartial pensions advice to thousands of people across the country. What makes us unique in the industry is we focus predominantly on people with much smaller pension pots than the traditional independent financial advisor would. And in doing so, we become a lot more accessible. When we look at pensions to see if they're in the right sort of place, that's stage one. And then what we have to do is we have to make sure that the pension stays in the right sort of place. We've analysed tens of thousands of pensions in the last year. And what we see is that people are paying sometimes two or three times more than they need to in fees, often invested with poor quality managers, often invested in a way that's not consistent with their uh, with their retirement goals or the amount of risk they're prepared to take. Today we're meeting Michelle to hear more about how we in the UK approach our finances. What's the biggest complaint you hear about financial services, especially pensions? Complexity. Yeah. So people don't understand the ins and outs of pensions, about investments, mm -hmm. and they need someone to put it into really straightforward language and explain it to them without any jargon. Dandons. And that's a skill, isn't it? I think it is. I think it is a skill. Mm -hmm. I think we need to make sure that we're simplifying yeah. everything that we say to customers. I suppose you deal with a large age range here. Younger people, but older people who hate admitting they don't understand something. Absolutely. In the UK, we've done some research actually that shows that people have a limited understanding of finances, but they don't want to tell us that. So it's important if a customer says to us that they understand something, we yeah. check and test that, but without being patronising. Are a lot of people that are only interested in the end result? Yeah, definitely. So we get customers who are, don't tell me about the pension, just do it. Um, but we don't like to do that. We like to help customers to understand mm -hmm. because part of this is about ownership of understanding the fund for the customer. We help them to make decisions. So we talk to them about what they want and then we tell them where to put it and we do it for them. And not only that, we then look after that on an ongoing basis for them. So they speak to us regularly. We review the pension and we make sure it's consistently in the best place for them. So if you, if, I don't know, if you've got some intel that biscuits were on the way up, <laughs> you could say... Buy shares and biscuits. Maybe not as granular as that, but what we can do is have a look at the different types of investments and we can use um, data to make sure that we are making the right choices for our customers and we help our customers to understand that. Coming up, we catch up with Jo, who introduces her friend Sean to the Profile Pensions process. I must have about 10 different pensions here no. and there. Yeah. That's a huge amount. And we meet finance blogger Nikki Ramskill, who shows us the alternative sources for financial advice. We already can sit and compare different mobile tariffs. That's, that's tricky enough, mm -hmm. but the same should be as easy with a pension. Over in Andover, Jo has managed to convince her friend Sean to seek some financial advice, just like she did. And at 51, start to take his financial future seriously. Nice to see you. Sean's in. Come in. Hello there, Sean. Nice Hiya. to see you. Nice to meet you Hello too. there. Hiya. Oh, we see you know Gee. what I like. Absolutely. <laughs> so, 
Joe's been in your head, has she? she Earworming. Has. She has. About pensions. Yeah, she has. So, what do you think you have at the moment, as far as the pension's concerned? Well, as I say, I've been uh, working since I was 18, paying into pensions, leaving jobs, uh, starting new jobs, and then you, f- you forget about the pensions, you just carry on going through life, and I, I think I must have about 10 different pensions here no. and there. Yeah. So, if Joe hadn't been going on at you, you just... Wouldn't be doing this at all? No, I think it's a bloke thing. I think you just carry on with life and hopefully when you're 65, they'll all come to you. But um, I don't think it's going to be like that. And Joe said, no, that's real life. You need to sort this out. Well, the good news is we've got somebody here who's going to help you pull all those pensions together and find out how much you've been spending. Yes, or losing. Mm. (laughs) Well, Sean sits down with Lizzie from Profile Pensions to find out how they can help with his many pension pots. I'm wondering if there are alternative sources that you can turn to for help. Nowadays, seeking good financial advice doesn't just mean going down the traditional routes. The internet is a rich source of information. So you're a GP, and yet you do a blog about finance. Yes. Tell me. (laughs) So I know it's not necessarily the most obvious connection. No. um, But I think money is such a fundamental part of our lives, basically. Mm -hmm. And if you really aren't getting on with your money and you're stressed about it, you're worried about it, you're not not truly healthy. So why not understand what's going on with your money, you know, make it better for you, and then you haven't got the worries. What are some of the worst cases that you've seen? I think, for me, the saddest thing is when I see an older person who is stuck at home. They can't go out, they can't do anything, they can't even afford to heat their house necessarily, and they're stuck. I just, I, I hate seeing it, and I, and I really don't want that for my generation. I want to make sure that the women, you know, my colleagues, my patients, don't end up like that, so... So what sort of things do you blog about? All sorts of things. So um, I really want people to feel confident when it comes to looking at money. So I look at things like how to save money, how to invest it, you know, things to do with your family, you know, how can you get your kids on board, you know, just just lots of different aspects to do with with money. But you obviously think there's a need for it. So you're not doing this purely for the good of your health. Yeah, this this definitely is a need for it. Um, We haven't got as many financial advisors in the country anymore as we used to. And traditional financial advice is one of those things that we don't Mm -hmm. need as much of anymore. So actually, it's about education. And that can be done by many different people. Let's go back to pensions. Do you think this area of the industry needs to make some changes? Yes, it's complicated. Um, There's a lot of mystique about it. You don't really know what's going on under the surface. And then when you ask, you get told all this really complicated jargon. You think, I've got no idea what that just meant. We already can sit and compare different mobile tariffs. That's that's tricky enough. Mm -hmm. But the same should be as easy with a pension. You should be able to sit down, look at what you've got and say, oh, well, that one does it cheaper. And actually, that's better. So I'd like to swap to that one, please. And that's, it would be lovely if that's as, how easy it would be. Are there pension companies which are taking a different, fresher approach? Mm-hmm. Profile pensions. Mm-hmm. They are taking a completely different approach to the pension industry. And they've got like a compare the market type thing going mm-hmm. on, which I love. I think it's so good. And they make it so much easier for people to be able to switch. They're not just going for the people that have got loads of money. They're going for the people, the ordinary people like, you know, like me, us. like us, exactly. That, you know, that's, that, they're the kind of people that need to be helped more than the ones that have got loads of money at the higher end. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Well, I'm going to follow you on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. Back in Andover, Sean is talking to Lizzie from Profile Pensions to find out how they can help. It, uh, it is a big minefield to me um, because the, I've, ever since I started work at 18, I've always had a pension. Yeah. But you, you lose, you, you leave jobs, you start new jobs, exactly. you forget about that one. And over the years, I have forgot about them all. And yeah. it's all money that I'm going to need later on in life. And when we look at people's pensions, there's certain types of pensions that aren't generally 
we would always recommend to stay where they are. Uh, so it is weighing up for the pros and cons, which can sound complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, um, once you go through kind of certain steps, a fairly understandable formula. Most people don't know that they're paying any fees on their pension. Yeah. Nearly everyone is. But unless you actively switch the same way you'd switch your gas, then you'll be kind of, your pension is essentially being eaten away by those fees. Time to check in and see how Sean's getting along. So do you think you fixed it? I think so. What Sean has done is perfect, which is just gather all the paperwork he's mm. had from over the years. And that is all we need then to go away and do the hard work for you. Quite excited actually, the way it's going already by what you've been telling me. Uh, I'm really excited to see how uh, well we get on. And it's been a big help, really big help to me. How do you feel about everything now? Thinking about it, well, before I didn't think about it, I was just naive, I suppose, and just carrying on. Hopefully they contact me in the future. But now I think, hopefully, it's going to be great. It's going to be good for me and my family as well. Hopefully yeah. having a reliable company to help me out. I will be sitting on a beach soon with me pineapple clada, <laughs> in clada, with the money that you make me. With us as well, obviously. We'll be popping along. That makes sense to be invited, yeah, absolutely. For most of us, it's difficult to get motivated about our finances. But if we don't, the implications can be catastrophic to you and your family. So, bite the bullet and make sure that you, after all your hard work, have the future you deserve.